Hey guys, welcome to Fix and Brew. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a Ring Pro doorbell. Let's go. Alright guys, so this is the Ring Video Doorbell Pro that I'm going to be installing. First thing you get when you open the box, you take the cover off, is you're going to have a Ring Doorbell Pro to the left, and then you'll have the Say Hello to the Ring instructions on the right. Keep those because I do reference those a lot in this video, or at least I did when I was installing, uh, and those do help a lot. Toss those to the side and then you'll have your extra covers. If you don't like the silver that it comes with, we have a black, we have a cream, and a gray. Um, I end up going with the black because that matches the best with when you use the wedge mounts. So here's the ring itself. It has all your labels on the back there what to do. You pull out this blue card and that is the, the wedge mounts underneath. Then over to the left, if you dump that out, you have your accessories like the screwdriver and the power adapter that you'll need to plug into your chime. Here's the transformer that you guys are going to need. This is what goes into your junction box and what takes that power and dulls it down into the power for the ring and so you don't overload it. Now, this one I believe puts out 30 amps, which I will link down below, which works perfectly. So moving right along guys, you will need an electrical tester to make sure you flipped off the right breaker switch. I will link mine down below and you guys can buy that off Amazon. It's not very expensive and it comes in handy with way more projects and such. So all you got to do is find out the wires you're working with, hover that over it and touch it. it. should stay green. If it doesn't, you flip the wrong breaker, you need to go check and switch up breakers. What you're going to want to do is splice into some wires and then set up a junction box to connect those wires together. What I'm doing here is opening up mine that I already have. I actually did this in the ring floodlight installation video, which you can check that out down below and learn how to splice those together. But I'm going to open that up and then I'll get started on setting up the transformer. Alright, so now that the cover's off, I'm just going to check one more time. Make sure these wires are not hot. Guys, you can never check enough to make sure you're not going to get electrocuted. So here's the transformer. First thing you're going to want to do is unscrew that screw on the back. That's what's going to hold it to the junction box. Slide that off all the wires. Find out where you're gonna to wanna to put this in the best possible spot that kinda of faces where you're gonna run the wires. All right guys, so I actually have a waterproof dustproof junction box, so it's just a little rubber piece that pops out. Once you do that, just run the wires right through, slide the black screw on the transformer into place, take that ring, Put it over your wires, lock that nut on there, and that way your transformer is secure. And guys, the transformer needs to be on the outside of the junction box, not in with the high voltage wires. Uh, it stays on the outside, which is code. 
All right, the next part is the easy part. Just wrap those splices around each other three times, get a nice secure splice, and put that wire nut on top and match the colors together, black to black, white to white, green to green, or just bare copper if it's bare copper. Pretty simple, just connect the bell wires to your transformer by unscrewing those front two screws and you'll connect the red to one and the white to one and that way you'll have those running to your Ring Pro camera. The next step is to know where you're going to put your ring and you're going to run that bell wire from that transformer down to where you're going to put that new doorbell. Now I measured 26 inches over from the wall up in the attic so I knew to go 26 inches over from the wall from the outside of my door here. Guys every house is different so I can't really help you with this one you just kind of got to do it yourself and kind of figure out what you want to work with here if you want to put it at an angle or if you want to put your doorbell straight on. This is the easiest for me because I could actually run the bell wire down the back side of that brick and there was nothing there so it was there's no insulation I needed to pull out or nothing like that. It just goes straight down and then now I just need to drill the hole so I can see the wire. And I'm actually working my way up. I've started with a smaller bit, went up to a little bit bigger, and then all the way up to the half inch, guys, so I could get a nice big hole in that brick. So the next step will be getting your hole big enough to where you can pull your wires through or however you're going to run them. Mine actually had to go down the studs from up in the attic and use a metal hook to slide through that half inch hole and pull them through. Once I did that, now I can mark my spots on where I want to use the wedge mount so I angle the ring out so it can see better and I'm gonna drill these holes for the mollies and then I can shove those mollies in and then eventually screw it down. You just want to take your ring out pull the cover off that'll expose where you're going to screw everything in and the screws on the back where you can connect your bell wire i use the wire extenders 
Um, there was kind of a lot of stuff jam-packed up in that hole, but it ended up working out. You guys don't have to use the wire extenders, but I just, I did in this video to show you. Same thing like up in the junction box, wrap the wires around three times and then connect those splices with the wire nut. I didn't do it in the video guys, I'm sorry I didn't wrap them around three times. This is wrong. Make sure you get the nice splice by wrapping it around that many times and so it doesn't come undone. Don't do it like in the video, do it like I'm telling you. Next part's pretty simple. Just put the two screws that came with your ring into the wedge mount or into the wall, however you're doing it, and screw them down. I actually messed up the screwing on the bottom one. It pulled out from the plastic, so I had to use my own screw, but it ended up working out anyway, so just be careful with the plastic, guys. Next, you can take the film off the ring, take your plastic piece you're going with, stick it on the ring, and then find out where that safety screw went when you open your box. It's small. You're going to put that up underneath so the plastic doesn't come off and no one can steal it. And that safety screw bit comes with the box, so check for that as well. Then I went back up into my attic, found out where I wanted to place the chime right next to the door, and I drilled a hole through so I could run the bell wire through, and now I'm marking my spots on where I'm going to drill and secure the chime to my wall. I'm going to take the molly that came with the chimes and I'm going to bang those into the wall so they can hold the chime in place. Unfortunately, my file got corrupted and I can't show you guys me connecting the wires, but basically you're going to want run the white wire from the doorbell pro to the front part that is labeled on the screw there, the front screw, and then you'll run the white from the transformer screw back to your transformer. It's pretty simple guys. I'll link the diagram down below. Other than that, you're all done. Next part is to go find your breaker box, flip that breaker back on, give yourself a thumbs up. You've completed this job. Let's go test it out.
you have it guys that's how you install the ring doorbell pro without any existing wires and now let's get on to my favorite part of the video the beer review all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you got your doorbell set up correctly now let's get on to the beer review and today's beer is none other than ryan guys truth ipa i know i said i'd try to get away from ipas but this is another favorite of mine so i had to go ahead and do it on this video um ryan guys is from cincinnati i've actually been there i found out from them by a friend randomly took me to that uh to that place and i've loved it ever since so I've had this beer before, but I'll go ahead and act like I haven't, and we'll tell you how it tastes. Overall, just a great beer. One of my favorites. It's not fruity at all. It kind of... It has a sweet smell to it when you first go to put it up towards your mouth, but it doesn't taste sweet like the other beers that I've reviewed on here. It's not overall too bitter to, to really drink either. So if you're just getting into the IPA game, I recommend Ryan Guys Truth. And if you've been in the IPA game a long time, guys, this is still a great beer to drink and delicious. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, please subscribe. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You guys, you know what I'll be doing. Thank you.